I've always felt different. I've always seen things, but when I tried to express them as a child, I was always told to ignore it. There were people that I didn't know that came to me and said, I have this message that I keep getting that I have to deliver to you. All of a sudden, out of the shadows, a homeless man just jumped right in front of me, and he said, I'm a soul just like you. I love it. I wanted to understand the universe and who and what we are and what are we doing here. Well, we're all part of this amazing soul wave tapping into each other. This was a major life changer. You are a light. You have helped me a ton. Thank you. You've given me the courage to live more from my soul. Millions of people are awakening. So wake up with Michelle Miche. Be pleased to hear the best-selling authors and experts in the fields of cutting-edge self-help, personal growth, metaphysics, and spirituality. The soul path of awakening. Understand what living awake is. Hello there, soul lights. Hello, hello. Oh my God, great to connect with all of you. Been looking forward to this uh, episode today to connect in with all of you. Um, in the chat, hello everyone. Uh, please let me know how the sound is in the chat. I'm on a different uh, mic, phoning in. Uh, so let me know, please. Um, also, if you are in the um, chat and you want to ask questions, that's fine. That's great. Uh, you got to be logged in or signed in with uh, Blog Talk Radio. And if you are listening by phone or want to listen by phone, I should say, that number is 347-539-5122. And um, let me just put in the chat, how is the sound? Um, if you want to get on air, if you have a question, uh, something you want to share, or if you want a reading, you need to press 1 on the keypad. And again, that number is 347-539-5122. 347-539-5122. Press 1 on your keypad. Oh, thank you, Athena. Also listening by phone. Oh, cool. Cool, cool, cool. I love when people do that in the chat. And you guys, I really love you all. I'm telling you, I love doing this podcast. We're expand- I told you, like... um Expanding to YouTube little by little, you guys, if you didn't hear last week, I talked about I got a ding, whatever, a dent, a dent in my aura from YouTube with my predictions, um, and it's been up since last October. I must have mentioned the V, so I'm going to, you know, now I'm, I'm worried because I'm, I have not been censored on this show ever. I've said it straight out. I've said everything. <laughs> So now I'm like, oh, Jacqueline, who's helping me upload, you know, episodes and putting thumbnails on them. I'm like, oh, my God, what did I say? Because, you know, I want to expand to YouTube. And then I'm probably going to do a more uncensored call-in uh, portion. I'm going to keep audio. We're going to keep on stay on BTR. Um, but I'm going to expand because I want to really also expand to video so we can show – you know, just more visual and graphics. Um, so I may be also expanding maybe Odyssey or Rumble, maybe have part of the show on or podcast on um, YouTube. And then if we want to do some deeper dives and stuff is coming up. Um, you know, what just gets me, though, that – it really wasn't anything, you know, when I listened to it, I'm like, well, I just talked about my experience. You know, you guys have known. I'm not told people to get the V or don't get the V. I have said where this has come from, but it wasn't in that It wasn't in that um, interview. So censorship is real, folks. I mean, it's just interesting. Um, just very, very just interesting. That's all I can say. It's just... It is the shadow, the unhealthy shadow side of Aquarius. The lesser evolved part of Aquarius is cults. The higher is community, interdependence. The low vibration, because it is a lot about groups and coming together. And you know the thing that I find, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to callers. I have one thing that I want to share with everybody, everyone. Uh, let's say I mentioned pay- no, I didn't mention Patreon. Come connect on Patreon. If you listen to this show, I'd love for you to come over to YouTube and subscribe. Um, come over to Instagram and uh, 
follow me there, and um, that's it. Let me know, most importantly, either through Awakenings Podcast at gmail.com or um, comments. I really don't get into Instagram. The only thing I do on Instagram is I have a Patreon, a soul-centered living uh, chat group, and a Patreon, a uh, soul path community chat group. Everything else I do not check. My my assistants check that. So don't Facebook message me. Don't Instagram message me. But I do, I love going to the comments on YouTube. So if you ever want to ask me something, you can leave it on the comments, you know, on a, one of my posts on Instagram or video on YouTube. Uh, you can always email me at awakeningspodcast at gmail.com and they'll forward it to me. So that's the best way to, you know, get in, you know, be in touch, um, you know, with me. And of course, here, you can ask me anything here, right? Um, Mentor Cam, that's another, that's a paid connection, but, um, you know, definitely in the, in the, you know, in the comments, you can always, you know, always connect with me. So just to touch on the energetics of what's going on, and then we're going to get to callers, and again, 347 539-5122 539-5122 is the number. Press 1 on the keypad. I always repeat the number because I've actually had people put in the comments or email me and go, I didn't know you could call in. Or I didn't know people were listening by phone. Or you could, oh, or they're listening by phone, but they didn't know that they could like unmute themselves and get a, a question asked or get a reading. So anyway, so that's kind of why I say that. And I lost my point to something else I wanted to share. But anyway, um, all right. So interesting energetic shifts. I know a lot of people are are feeling very overwhelmed, uh, challenged, a lot on your plate, a lot going on energetically. Some people are feeling very overwhelmed, yet things are stagnant, or it's the same old, same old drudgery, drudgery to do, to do, next step, next step, next step. A lot of people are definitely feeling the shift and more of the 5D and above energies coming in or more expansive energy. And you could be feeling all of that at the same time. You know, there's just a lot of feelings, a lot of feels up in the air right now. You know, expansion, uncertainty, certainty, you know, about one part of your life, but maybe not another part. Feeling the energetic shift, definitely, especially since I would say um, August 1st is when we started going into this pattern. Now, some of you that follow astrology, I'm not going to dive deep into it because uh, most of my listeners are not into astrology. I love it, but we can touch upon it. But I just think this is important because I look at astrology, but I look at beyond the astrology. Again, the astrology is simply just one lens and it's interesting that um, I'll get things as a psychic channel, right, as a medium, but I don't necessarily know why it's happening. I just know it's happening because I'm reading the energy. And then I will watch some astrology podcasts, and they will say why it's happening, like the like the um, the asks, and then I'm like, oh, oh, oh. So you know, I've been doing these more akashic readings, deep diving, working with the akashic guardian. Um, or guardians, because people don't know this, there's some information that you can get psychically. You know, everything has layers and levels, right? Just in regular conversations with people, like, you may get something surface, or you may, you know what I mean? Or you get a deeper dive with someone else, um, or something's held back, and then later you find out. It's like that psychically, so there are back channels to the Akashic to get information that isn't as readily known or isn't right on top. You know, you got to kind of know how to access and, and what to ask, you know, what kind of how to frame the, the question. You know, I always say, in, in when I teach people to become more psychic and to channel, the, the question opens the door. It's, the, it's our questioning, it's our prayer, you know, it's our intention, our prayer, our asking that really opens the, the, the cosmic door, the portal. So I've been getting some really interesting information. Monday I have an, another reading. It's two and a half hours long. My God, pick a card, four cards. But each each reading is between 
35, 40, 45 minutes to 50 minutes long. And it, there was just so much information, general about relationships, work, contracts, you know, just what people are wrapping up. It's all about next chapter. So you may want to take a look at that plus the, the previous uh, pick of cards that I've done. A lot of people have said they've been quite helpful. They've actually been quite helpful for me because I don't remember what I channel. <laughs> and so a lot of times I'll go back and I'll just kind of move the cursor around and say, what do I need to know right now? You know. So the, the, a lot of people talking about this, unions, unions. I feel it's in preparation for what is going to be happening on the planet, in the world. We're all being hooked up, linked up. You know, we're linking up more with our soul tribe or, or neighbor, wh- whomever we are going to be around. And this means starting to pull in partnerships. Now, this is the higher vibration or higher octave of the Aquarian age. So those of you that have been doing a lot of inner work, deep dives, maybe you've been listening to this podcast and other podcasts like this, and you've been doing your own inner work, you've been doing your own healing and like, you know, I need to do this, I need to do that, I'm shifting this, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Well, it's working. Can't tell you how many clients have said, oh my God, it really does work. You know, or they took my synergy course about manifesting, they're like, oh my God, my whole life has changed. Now, that's because they put in the work. It's, it's, it's not, yeah, I can help, but, you know, it's the people having doing the work, inner work, and, and having their own realizations then what that what does that mean? You align to a higher vibrational frequency, more soul expression, soul experience, less and less of the wounded aspect. That part is really shifting. So what does that mean? That that these relationships are coming into form, the sacred unions are coming into form. We're to be partnering up not out of dependency and and not you know it's not runner chaser energy it's interdependency enough independence that we're on our path doing our 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 you know expressing our soul gifts and talents and being of service and creating and doing what it is we're meant to do and so is the other person and so there's a a care and dependency of support of each other in the ways that we need on a soul level but also the independence so you're going to see a lot more of a coming together. And one thing that will be helpful to do, especially I believe it's the end of the month, the, tw- the between the October 23rd and the and the 30th, there's a really important energetic shift. Um, Mars is slowing down. It's in Gemini. Now, this is very interesting because I've looked at this psychically and I've also looked at this in the astrology. A lot of times we think, oh, things can go wrong. Um, with, see, we've got to remember, we are different. We're, we are at a different vibrational frequency, which deems different experiences planetarily. So if everybody can kind of get the idea like, well, things can manifest on a low level, a medium or a higher, you know, low octave, medium, and higher octave, or more expanded, less troublesome. So I'm really seeing in what I was shown that actually this, you know, Mars and Gemini retrograde is not is a time to finish up, is a time um, for life review. Look at look and see, look over your life and see the pattern and patterns. Look at the main pattern of your life that makes up your soul pattern. What's your life mainly been about? That takes some introspection. Then look at all the little patterns that feed into that that you've gone through. Because you're going to start seeing a main pattern and align to that main pattern, which is the soul pattern. And the soul pattern aligns you to the higher vibrational frequency. It's the unifying force. It's the soul alignment. Connects you to your soul signature frequency. Your vibes, basically. Your true vibes. So there's going to be major leveling up of your expectation and your soul's desires, higher standards, higher vibrational frequency, living, and focus. So what I'm getting that we're going to, many people are going to be not using the lower mind as much. So Gemini can be the lower mind, beta consciousness like gossip, trolling. That's all. That's all Gemini with a little Scorpio in there. 
But the higher mind of Gemini, Gemini does have a higher component. It's not only the twins of duality and opposition. Those, when you study the mythology of it, it's also, um, there were quadruplets. So again, there's a lower level aspect of duality and polarity and then there's a higher aspect. So the lower aspect of duality is always about opposition. It's fighting, right? It's me and you, us and them. It's all this opposition. Then you go into, you know, the higher you go, you get more into the complementary. So you have the opposite, the oppositional, and then you... you in the, then you go into those layers of what is complementary, complementary energy. So you're going to, a lot of people are going to be tapping into that. So you're, this is a time to look and see what did you not get to finish that you really love doing. It's going to come from a soul level. You don't even have to really think about it. You're going to get inspired energy, you know, inspiration around it and move into inspired action on it. You're going to see less focus with a lot of people on problems or gossip. You're going to actually, and this has already started. Now, yeah, we have a lot of people trolling and bullying online and this and that, but a lot of people are choosing, and I definitely hear them on my podcast. People call in and go, or or on my Patreon. They're like, oh, yeah, I'm not paying attention to that. I'm focusing on me. I'm focusing on my creativity. I'm focusing on my daughter, my son, my family. I'm focusing on what I can do. So you're going to hear more and see more and more people like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, whatever. Uh, yeah, I'm just, yeah, okay, I'm just letting that go. I've even had to do it. I had to do it the other day on one of a, a Facebook comment, and I thought, yeah, this guy likes to troll me. He likes to, and I had a response, and it was, you know, a, a, an explanatory kind of more, I'm trying to include, be inclusive with him. And then I just, what I did, I just liked, okay, I saw your comment. Not going there, and I said, "Oh, do I do I edit my video, or do I do that comment, long ass comment?" And he's going to comment back. Last time this happened, I don't know, probably April, May, something, beginning of the year, beginning of spring, and then some people jumped in and they were being very, you know, polite and protective of me. And oh, Michelle means this, Michelle's this, and you know, and I thought. It'll probably happen again, and I don't want to go there because it's a waste of energy. Because, by the way, guys, it's our page. <laughs> you know what I mean? If you don't like what I'm writing, it's not that I don't want people to have disagreements with me, but the thing is, or disagree with what I say, then call in the podcast and let's have a talk. Because you can't really do it by texting, by 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 comments. It just takes too long, back and forth. What you write could be misinterpreted, can't get the tone, and it's like, uh, I don't want to do it. So you are going to see more people kind of dropping out of that more and more. Uh, you're going to be, again, also seeing re- the reality you created. Hey, gang, this is important. What's the reality that you created or co-created with God, the universe, all that is, your higher self, and what do you want to change? What did you create by your decisions? Now, some of this could be karmic, things that you needed to go through, but there still is a co-creative aspect to it. And then you want to look at what you didn't finish or better live out. What's going to come to the surface is these secret desires, secret dreams, secret desires. And then I was hearing you can't fool the universe. We're moving more to a soul level. And and the, the soul path is really beginning for many the soul path the idea of a soul is going to start beginning especially next year we've had hints of it and you know we've been living it but not a a lot of people not you know a small amount you're going to see it more in the mainstream this idea and it's going to be more highlighted this whole idea and the other thing to to mention is that and I see this a lot as a reader, you know, or even as a therapist. You know, a lot of times people say, I really want X, Y, and Z. But they really don't. They really don't. You either see it in their chart or you see it by their decisions or just the energy. So I'm going to just say you can't fool the universe. You can't fool your higher self. If you, like, I'll get people saying, 
really want a relationship. But then the decisions that they make are not in alignment with that. They're bigger decisions. In other words, they're so busy, no one can really come in. You know, they're very in their, you know, male energy or really strict about, you know what I'm saying? They're not, they're not being flexible in their nature or someone, I really, really want a great career. I don't have a career. And then it's like, but you, you don't focus on it. You don't do anything. So that's going to be a little bit of a wake up call to quite a lot of people between now and then I would say April, May of next year. That's also the Gemini is not just communication and talking to other people or posting or social media or, you know, neighbors, you know, the third house in astrology. It's our mind. It's how we think. So we have a really good chance right now, a really good chance to take the time to see how are we really thinking and what are we thinking into existence and be honest with ourselves. Like, wow, this is what I've been focused on or thinking. What are your inner dreams saying? What do you really want? What are you, are you, you know what I mean? It's like, is it all about the likes and subscribers? Is it all about the external world? Is it attainment? Then that's what you're going to get. If that's what you're focused on internally, it's, you know, then that's what you're going to get. So come to terms with your secret desires that maybe you don't want to share with anyone even, that like it's like those, those things you say, oh, that could never happen. You know, that'll never happen for me or to me, you know, or I'll never get that. You know, those are the things you want to look at. Or, oh, I've wanted to do that ever since I was a kid. Or ever since, I've always loved that. I've always wanted to do this. Right? Let yourself have a moment in this time of reflection. Okay, I guess I go on too long and people <laughs> jumped off. But I do like to share. A lot of people like this. I know some people only want the readings, and that's fine too. Uh, call in number 347-539-5122. I do see people in the queue, but maybe you're just listening because I don't see uh, the little hand up. You don't have one pressed. Um, oh, Athena, I am a scientist. Um and feel out of alignment in my field, very discouraged and isolated. People taking advantage of me. My astrology chart suggests that I'm in the right career for problem solving, but I don't feel that way. Um, why don't you call in, Athena? <laughs> you show this is a fit or is a change coming. Um, well, see, that's the thing. Like, um, Do you show that's where I need to be? Okay. Here's the thing, we have to kind of not think so literal. Like, it's the energy that you're taking. And I may do this uh, at some point or do a, a pick a card on this, on the seven rays, soul rays. Um, it's, how, it's how you do what you do. Okay. So a lot of times, and I, again, I've, got, I've had this with clients where I'm like, wow, you came on the teacher. Oh, I used to be a teacher. I hate teaching. I don't want to teach. I'm like, woo, hold on here. Hold on. I didn't say you're going to go back to teaching middle school or whatever, <laughs> preschool or whatever. It's how you do. Even when I was modeling and I was acting, I was always, te- I was always teaching. Either by example, I'd show up on set. This is before a lot of people did meditation, and I would, you know, have my spiritual books or my self-help books and astrology books uh, in the early days, later than it was on my Kindle or my device or phone. Um, you know, I, and I remember a lot of times, uh, one time, it was so funny, I, I don't remember, it was on the set of something, maybe a commercial, a film, I don't know. I was sitting in the, one of those folding director chairs to the side because we, we were on break for whatever scene this was. I had my legs crossed, and I had a hat on. Those of you who know I love my hats, kind of Panama hat, whatever. And I had my, I, I was meditating. I was deep in meditation and actually chanting. And people were saying, yeah, Michelle likes to take all these naps. And I overheard somebody, and I said, no, I'm actually meditating. And they're like, what? What are you doing? And then it opened this whole conversation. That's being a teacher, whether by example, or speaking up. So, what we literally do 
or the way we do it. How do we do? Like I have some clients that are in real estate and they love it. What what they do in the real estate is their whole objective. And they used to do commercial. They did they did um, what do you call it? Uh, residential. Then they got into commercial. They made a lot of money. They then but they missed the residential. And I asked why, and they said that's my purpose is to find the best home. For people, especially families, they loved, and they said, and I love doing the shows, I love, you know, the showings, they, they like getting, the, you know, doing the um, staging or bringing candles in or crystal, I mean, all this, and they lit up, and they're like, I realize my purpose is to help people find the home, you know, the house that can be their home, okay, I have another client that's in, uh, investments and and does astrology charts on the um, companies that she's investing with, and she invests money for huge corporations. And what makes it meaningful for her now is she tells them, she shows them the astrology chart. She shows them all the other charts, right? Due diligence, whatever you have to do, fundamentals and whatever else that's called, the history and this this and that, and um, the prospectus. She does all that, you know, all that. But then she brings in the astrology chart and and shows the correlation. And so now that gives her more meaning to what she's doing. So, <laughs> Sue, what are you saying? You are always right on with with what is going on, and I love to listen and connect. Hey, Sue, thank you. Yeah, is this going on for you too? I mean, this is a major, major Focus energetically because we're really moving more from a constructed world, constructed ego, not the true ego, but the constructed self, what we call the constructed self. Uh, it's time to these disowned parts of us we have to bring back in and love, you know, the parts that are whatever we want to call them, less evolved, whatever, whatever names we give these parts of ourselves. You know, it's really... I don't know. Oh, I know why this is happening. If I look at it astrologically, because wait, we have some aspects to Scorpio. So the 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 north the north nodal axis right now is uh, Taurus is the north node, and um, sometimes I want to know why. I mean, it's like it is what it is. But anyway, the south node is in Scorpio. I think we have Venus. Is Venus transiting? Maybe that's a Venus transit, or is it, um, which has to do with values. I'm looking, you know, it's not just about money and, you know, appearance. But it, there may be something with that south node, like to make peace and to bring it, it forward. Because the south node, a lot of times people misunderstand, thinking like, oh, you don't want to live your south node. It's what you've done before, what you know. You have to... But you want to include, it's like including that part of you perhaps in a new direction or a new way. So, Athena, maybe that's something for you. It's like how can you do what you do in a different way or a different company? You know, if you enjoy doing what you do, Athena, in the chat. Why don't you call in, Athena? Are you still in the chat? You feel out of alignment and discouraged and isolated. So it may be doing what you do, but in a different company. Like I have, I'm going to say with another person that I've worked with over the years who loves what they do, but they're in a company that isn't the type of company that they want to be working with. You know what I mean? It's like we can do that transitionally for just so long if that's your thing. Now, some people are like, I don't care what I do. I need to make a certain amount of money for myself or my family or whatever it is, and that's that. And they get their fulfillment in other ways. And that's something to look at during this life review time. This life review time will be very highlighted or you know, emphasized. It's going to be kind of intense between now and the end of the year. But it is going to go on, I would say, the next six, eight months, and for some, the whole, you know, between now and, and this time next year. Depends where you are in the cycle. Um, will determine what you're, you know, where you're at. Some, let's see, I see 917. Oh, okay, yeah. Three four seven five three nine five one two two. Press one on the keypad, and then also 
Yeah, that lets you. Let's see, we got someone. Gotcha, gotcha. Hi. Hi, Michelle. It's Athena. I thought so. Hi, Athena. Hi. I'm sorry. I'm I'm driving actually right now, so. Um, oh. Cool. Yeah, I was. I was okay. Fixing, but no, you're you're spot on. Um, I've been doing a lot of gardening, and I started a small LLC company um, to try to use what I do in research uh, for plant medicine, nice. plant medicine, mm. holistic health. Um, that was mm-hmm. one of the things that I was thinking about, but just, yeah, I just, I guess I wanted confirmation. Yeah. So it is, you're doing what you do. Um, you know, and interesting enough, I had a client yesterday that's doing stuff in, in, in that field as well. And I guess it's a little on the side, other than, other than I guess, the ketamine, uh, which I'm yeah. not into all this kind of stuff. But um, the thing is that I was sharing uh, with them is that that is part of the Aquarius age is bo- is, a, is a rise in synthetics, the ph- pharmaceuticals, a lot with medical, yeah. medical devices, technology, but also the alternative, also the offbeat or alternative at some point starts rising. And eventually what ends up happening out of the two comes the energetics where people are doing things more you're going to see more like sound healing or vibrational healing, maybe a return of like radionics. But in the interim, you are going to see, and because she said, oh, it'll never be, I said, no, it'll be legalized. I said, I can see psychically people getting licenses to do this or having, you know, not just retreat centers, but clinics. You know, you may have to, and I yeah. said, look at pot. It's kind of like with pot. It's kind of that kind of thing. Yeah. Where they're, they're with, yeah. exactly. So it, it's, I feel like it's a new kind of burgeoning um, area that that will gain, you know, more more momentum. It's it's kind of grassroots or underground, but it will gain more momentum. Okay. Wonderful. That's great. I'm just gonna keep. Keep going, keep praying, keep meditating, um, and yeah, just yeah, uh, and do and you have inspired <laughs> action. You haven't you you have inspired. That's all you need to do is whatever's the inspiration. What's the inspired action that you, you know, like you did the LLC. You know, if you just listen to that your intuition through the inspired action. That's intuition. If we follow it will give us some kind of inspired action, something something to do based on our intuitive hit, right? Which yeah. sounds like that's what you're yeah. doing. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Michelle. You're welcome. Thanks for calling in. Good to hear your voice. You're welcome. Good to hear you too. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Oh, love that. So you see that that's what I'm talking about. All this kind of um kind of getting the message of you know where are my interests? You know, what did I used to love doing? You know, and it's going to be updated a bit. That's the other thing. It's not going to be exactly um you know, it's going to be in a different way that best suits your soul. You know, you're going to see the vision start taking form and you're going to say, oh, I didn't, but I didn't do it that way. I didn't do it another way. You know, I I did it this way. This is the way that, you know, resonated for me. Okay, gang. 347-539-5122 is the number. Let's see what else, anybody else? Got any questions in the chatty, in the chat chat? Okay. Got that answered. I'm looking at the chat. Sue, what a week I've had. We can stop this any time. <laughs> Sue. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's um, part of this energy does bring a little bit of a, a, a tease and a squeeze. So you might feel kind of squeezed in certain parts of your life, certain areas of your life, like, God, I can't get a break. It's like, what it is, you know, um, positioning, you know, many of you, 
you know, many of us, many of you, is for a breakthrough. Like like breaking out of the, the limitation, the constriction, the container. And again, this kind of depends on where people are in their timeline. If you haven't made the changes yet that you know you need to make, and whatever it is, if it's mental, emotional, is it physical, is it material, is it time, you know, are you in the process of making them or, you know, are you, do you need help or support in making them, you're holding back, or is it, you know, you're kind of like in the pre-stage or pre-phase, and then some have been, are making the changes, then some have been making the changes, and again, whatever you're at, there'll be some kind of breakthrough. Yeah, Jay, Jay, okay, exhausted over here too, yeah. The energy is very exhausting because part of the reason is it, it is a faster-moving energy. I mean, there's, it's interesting because there's more energy, it feels denser. And it kind of reminds me, I'm thinking about years ago, a hairdresser told me, oh my God, your hair is really fine, but it's, it, it's so much. And I'm like, yeah, it's thick. It's th- it's a lot of hair. I have a lot of hair. You know what I mean? It's like a blanket. But the strands are thin. That's kind of what we're all going through in a way, is that we have, you know, it might be higher vibrational energy that's moving much more quickly, and it must it's a lighter energy. But it, it because there's so much of it, it's heavy. It's it's there's a density, kind of like clouds. Is it cumulus? Whatever the clouds are, like rain clouds, or get heavy, but there's a lot of rain, there's a lot of light, and sometimes you see a lot of light coming through that, right? Or lightning is, is light, but it's also heavy because it, you know, hits, it, it makes a big impact. And also there's a lot in the etheric, what a lot of you are feeling in the etheric, there's a lot that's about to manifest, that's about to drop, but it hasn't yet. So think of pregnancy, the last you know, month to weeks, the, you know, the baby's head is dropping, you feel heavier, you know, you're just like, you're going to bust. That's Everybody is kind of like going to bust. That's the Uranian energy. Then we have the Saturn energy that's like, whoa, 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 slow, slow, you got to do this, you got to do that, all these little details and to-dos. And it's that's one part of it. The second part that we all have to learn better is to manage the energy because on, we've been taught when you have a lot of energy, you need to use it. You need to get stuff done. You need to go, 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 go. Part of that's true is like riding out the cycles when you have enough energy, get stuff done, and then when you have less energy, rest. We haven't really been taught on this earth, and especially in the Western societies, to rest. Well, rest is looked at, you know, you only rest when you're sick, Right. You only take a day off from work when you say sick days. You know, now some companies have, what is it, personal days to get stuff done, but there still has to be a reason. What if you just need to nurture? You need to recover from the weekend. And I don't mean substances or drinking. I mean energy shifts or getting a lot done. You know what I mean? So I feel like that is going to be that self-care and nurturing, especially next year. When, um, I believe Saturn goes into Pisces. Uh, there'll be kind of this like idea of you know energetic measuring, if you will, like your energetic gas tank. You know, is it or it, your bank account? Is it filled up or is it low? You know, do you don't want it to hit bottom? But we haven't been taught to, me- you know, to man- manage and measure our own energy. We're just taught, to, oh, it's work day. You got to work all day. You got to keep going, you know, or, or till you finish it. You know, putting things to the next day, which I kind of now get a delight. It's like sometimes going, oh, I'm just going to move that over to Friday or Monday, or I'm going to move that to Sunday. I'm not going to do that today because. I am exhausted. Now, this is if you can do it. Obviously, sometimes we can't, but we, if you look at your life, especially during this life review time, you really slow down and look. You're going to see that you, you have a lot of self-imposed deadlines that aren't really real. They're, they're based on a judgment of what you should or shouldn't be doing, or, or you know, measuring yourself with the outside 
authority or outside person or situation of what they're doing. And what can you realistically do right now for whatever reason? Even if the past, you could do a lot more. Maybe in the present, for whatever reason, you're not able to. Yeah, when people touch me and they're like, oh, my God, it's like a blanket. And I'm like, I told you. That's why a lot of times I, you know, I love wearing my hair down, but, like, during the day or when I sleep, I put it up like a bun or a ponytail, like a big loose-knit bun or ponytail because, especially in the summer, which is good for winter time, you know. It's <laughs> it's good for the winter time or when I've been in colder climates uh, for the times that I visited there or lived, lived in a colder climate, but... Yeah, so Jay, you know, yeah, it's like a little, it's like a little, uh, little heater. <laughs> but I'm glad, I mean, I'm glad, you know, I'm not going to change a thing, I like it. <laughs> it curly or straight, I like it, I like it. So anybody got any questions or anything they want to, in the chat, they want to share or add to this, or on the phone lines, uh, press 1 on the keypad. Three four seven again five three nine five one two two is the number. I'm feeling like people are going through a lot of stuff. At least when I was tuning in uh, for this podcast today, um, I was definitely feeling like people are really going to be slowing down and uh, looking. Like, hey, I can't do this. What what can stay and what can go, or where do I really want to go? What do I want to do? Oh, Sue in the chat. Both self-imposed, but some out of my control and try to go with the flow. Yeah. I think what happens, Sue, if this resonates for you, this is what I've been doing. If it's self-imposed, I really look and see, is it something that, you know, I have to do? Or even if it's not, I mean, I had a meeting scheduled, and actually it's gotten rescheduled. Now it's rescheduled by the person that's helping me, but... uh, woman that's assisting and helping me with curriculum building and other things. Um, We had a meeting, and I had so much on that whole week. I was exhausted, but I was going to push through because I really want to get these projects, get this stuff going. But um, I was staying out of town at a friend's house while they were gone, and I wanted to, you know, wash the towels, the sheet, all of that put the clothes in, and then I go out and I hear this, "Eh," and I'm like, oh, my God, what is that? What is that? What's going on? The washer went on the fritz. (laughs) Kerplunk. All wet, everything, heavy stuff wet in the washer. I'm I'm in between clients. You know, all these different other things, errands, I don't even know what else, editing, whatever else I was doing. And then... um, I'm like, okay, I'm going to have to go to another friend's and put the clothes in the dr- in the washer and dryer. So I didn't get everything done that I wanted to. Because I wanted to have, my expectation, I wanted to have everything done. The bed made up, everything spick and spanny. I even wanted to get flowers, but I wasn't able to do that because I, I had a really, really busy week. And I was still going to try to meet my meeting. And then I, I stopped and paused at one point, and I thought, I, my mind, my head is not just in it. I cannot... Now, mind you, if it was something, a client, some, I can just tune in and I'm, it's a, I'm in a whole different headspace. But to have to think of things, so it was about an hour into all the madness. I just had to text and say, you know, got to reschedule, so sorry. And, you know, it was end up being okay. And it was just like literally, and I was like sopping wet in the front of my T-shirt and these pants I had on because I had to pick up all the heavy stuff that was in the washer that it was all wet, right? <laughs> I couldn't, because it didn't go through the wash cycle, so I couldn't just throw it in the dryer, and then I had to put it in my in the car. And um, Anyway, total, total, all those planets retrograde and Mercury retrograde. A total, you know, Mercury retrograde fiasco. But it ended up being okay. It was all right, and I kind of flew with it, and I kind of had a chuckle about it and a laugh, and I just went, you know, like Sue saying in the chat, flow, flow. Oh, thank you, Queen. You like my YouTube videos. Thank you so much. They're a blessing. Um, 
Sue, remember from class I had three cyclones. Oh, that's right, those so cyclones. It was multiplied. It was like a half dozen. Oh, my God, cyclones. Oh, my God, Sue. Hopefully those, no more cyclones, right? No, no more cyclones or hurricanes, I hope. Um, yeah, let's see. Okay, we've got a caller again. If you have a question or a comment or you want a reading, 347-539-5122 and press 1 on the keypad. Hi, you're on air. Hello. Hello. Hi, um, Natasha, I had a question about relationships. Yeah, what's your first name? Natasha. Hi, Natasha. Okay, now I can hear you. Can you hear me? Hello. <laughs> Hello. Yes, I can. Yes. Okay, go ahead. What's your question? Oh, it's about uh, relationships. Yeah, what about it? Oh, uh, it's, well, what, what do you see moving Coming forward? Coming up for you with a person, a certain person, yeah. or, or in uh, general? Yeah, with the partners. Okay, uh, with the per- partner, partner you're with, with your partner you're with now. Uh, not with somebody now. Okay, all right, that's, so someone new coming in, let's look. Yeah, I don't know if you heard me, but really the question opens the channel, so we get, then you're invested in it. When you ask the questions, it's like you're really putting okay. that out into the universe that you want, that's what you want, because you're really wanting to know about it. Okay, let's look at Natasha. Yeah. Let's really so there's a lot coming. Ooh, definitely. Um, partnership. Or just what you see. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, since it's like a little mini read, I like. I do feel somebody. You know, the whole idea for you of partnership or support relationships or or more with relationships. I'm getting time yeah. of Aries, so I would say fourth, I'm getting fourth month, time of Aries. Um, now, I don't know if you have Libra in your chart or they could, or some, if you are Libra or Libra prominently in your chart. Um, dating. Yeah, uh, you're going to no, be, no. yeah. No, well, I don't actually know my chart so well. Okay. I think they're around work or something you do every day. I, I, I feel it, it's definitely showing a relationship coming in. I don't know if it's right. I don't know if it's in the next couple months. I'm not getting that clearly. I keep hearing Aries, so they oh. could be Aries or it could be time of Aries, which would be March, April. What I can tell you okay. is by the time by the time you meet this person, you are very like. That's it. I want to meet somebody. I've got to meet someone. I'm not doing this anymore. I, I'm, so it kind of makes me think there might be a false start with someone around the holidays that just, um, I don't know. Yeah, do you know who that is already? There's someone around you. Uh, actually, there's nobody around me as of yet. It's a separation, okay. so I'm. Single. Oh well, that okay. Tell what's the separate okay? Because there's somebody I don't know if it's somebody from the past that wants to get back with you, or you meet someone. Either you're not ready, mm. or or there's something off. There's something that just I don't know doesn't work out with them. I can I can because uh, one thing <laughs> I feel about you is you you can be very um, boom boom. You know, black and white. No, you're like you'll go with things. You'll kind of go with the flow. But if you see something isn't right or isn't happening, boom, that's it. Nope, that's it. Nope, tried it. That's it. No more. So there is something like that mm-hmm. around the holidays that's coming up. And then you kind of, I, I don't know, it's almost like in your mind you go back to the drawing board in a way, what you really need and what you want. And then something shifts around end of January, February within your energy. And that's when I feel you draw the person in. So it could be March, April. I keep hearing Aries. Um, wow. So it could be very, could be okay. very masculine. Yeah. So definitely there is someone coming in. That's that is for sure. You're, you're maybe it's because you're finishing up something right now that it's not quite uh, right. Or you well waiting. Or, yes. Okay, waiting. So see. That might be because that energy is still around you. So either you're going to be dealing with that person more 
Or you could meet someone and you you see a little yellow potential red flag of a similarity and you're like, no, that's no. But oh, okay, yeah. I understand. Okay, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, because I, yeah, yes. that person okay. is still around you. Maybe even wanting to come back or I I haven't seen dealings them with. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, okay. Yeah, it's a long, That's yeah, good. that that person is maybe energetically, but I've tried to do lots of cord cutting, releasing, inner work. I mean, I guess it's ongoing. Hmm. You know, the emotional body just takes a while sometimes, or it could be the other person around or thinking about, are are they, they're not acting up or anything or wanting to come back? I don't know. When, I, I haven't talked to them in six months. Okay. Yeah. So Nothing. It, 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 it's just it, crickets. Okay. <laughs> okay. So it may just be now that that could be the person I see also popping up. I don't know. Or it may just uh, be it's taking be, a while. Yeah. It's taking a while to just cycle out. Like like sometimes when we're hurt from somebody or disappointed or upset, it's just like it's just mental, emotional, and mostly emotional processing. You know, it's like sometimes we go through something and then one day we, sometimes for some people, one day you get up and you just feel different. You feel differently. Like, that's what I think yeah. is going to happen to you. I'm waiting for the breakthrough. <laughs> I saw yeah, your video well, it's coming. You're talking about it's breakthrough. Coming. Yeah. Yes, okay, but it's, it's in coming. the winter. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, just yeah. keep well, waiting and keep way. doing the work then, you're, I guess. Well, do your work. Get out. Get out. Play. Create. Do do stuff. You know, you're you're due for it. It's on its way. You know, you're in the, you're in the cycle of it. So I think the thing just to hold on to is for sure there's a relationship coming in. Maybe do more things that you would want to do in a relationship and just get out more. That helps shift the energy also. Okay. Well, okay. you know what? I'll work on that. Thank you so much. Okay. You're so Bye. welcome. Take care. Bye, Natasha. Bye. Bye. Yeah, sometimes it's just a shifting our... It doesn't... Again, we can mentally be ready for something or intellectually, but where are we at in the emotional body? And sometimes we're doing everything we need to do, everything right, everything. It's just a pr- time. It's just a processing um, that something shifts. You know, I know I had that recently because I had a lot of loss, and, and some of you know that I, I uh, nurtured or take take took care of my little Yoshi for two years. Some the last, I don't know, almost year. I sometimes was only sleeping an hour, a day, you know, a night with everything that I had going on. You know, and then of course her death was really difficult. But I did all the things, all the right things. But my energy now is just starting to shift. I'm seeing, you know, hope. It's just different because you can still do things that you know you need to do. You know, you show up, you do things, you do, you go out, you you mingle, you do things. But there's still something internally that hasn't clicked. And so I feel like this time for many people, I would say between now and again. April, May, that something starts clicking. And for some of you, it's going to be within the next three, four months that something just clicks in. It's like the train track, you know, how it changes. It just clicks. You're on the train and you don't, you you know, you look back and go, oh, we changed tracks. All right, so light, it's time for our second half of the program uh, for Awakening Dialogue today. We have Melissa Hughes. Uh, she is a business and success coach, and she's the founder of Live Rich. So see what's going on with Melissa. Hi, Melissa. Welcome. Glad to be here. Hi, Hi Melissa. Michelle. How are Thank you? Glad to be here. Huh? Great. Oh, thank good. You. Great. Thank you. Oh, so welcome. All right. So, um, and I know you have some kind of event. We'll talk about that a bit as well. But want to get a little bit of a background on um, how you got, how did you start doing what you're doing, I guess? Oh, that's that's a great question. That's a great question. Um, But I also want to say sorry for your loss. 
I just came in and I heard that. And oh, um, I had a few losses recently, and so I totally get what you're saying. And um, you do. both of my grandparents that were like pillars of our family tree, if you will, passed away within five months and six days of each other. So oh. um, you're right. It's an interesting time and a lot of emotions and a lot of blessings, but also bittersweet moments as well. Absolutely. And, you know, it's something we don't talk about enough, I think, the whole idea of loss and what it does. Um, right. I actually think since 2014 had seven major losses and six of them were deaths, family or clients. Uh-huh. Yeah. And that's a, it takes a, a lot. It's very you know, tough. We're kind it's of, very, very tough. Yeah. We're kind of like trained to like just – bounce back or people are uncomfortable talking about it or, you know, where they're gone or they were sick, so you should know that, you know, um, and people forget. Right, right. or they were already up in age, they had a good life. Yeah. You know, all, all the oh. things. And, oh, Melissa, you know, i got to uh, tell you, I, ha- I hate that one, the up in age or when they say, well, they've lived a good life. I had a client the right. other day that was right. talking about that. Where her father was in the hospital and they said, well, you know he's he's had he's still alive, but they were saying if something happened, he's had a good life. And I thought, how dare they? How determine right the, the time? He's like, oh, time's up. Exactly. You've had enough. <laughs> You've had enough. You know, and it doesn't make it any any easier by no means. I mean, when some people can impact your life, they just do so. And I I remember I was like pretty devastated when my grandmother was. Uh, was gone, right? And I was like, you might be pushing intuitively. You know, I was like, man, I just thought to myself, what happens if, like, she's the last unicorn, the most spiritual person I've ever met in my life. What's going to happen? You know what I mean? It's a thought that came to mind, and then there you go. Oh. She, she had gone. Oh, and I gosh, right. Called me. Yeah, it was, it was awful. It was not good. It was not good. It was not good. But, you know, um, I had a friend call me that day, and she's like, okay, I know you're getting all the condolences and all that. She's like, um, but I had a I had a, a quote that I wanted to share with you, and this quote like really shifted me. She said that there was a quote, and I I think it's Ernest Hemingway. I'm not really sure. It said that a man has two deaths. Have you heard this one before? No, no. A man has two deaths. One when they are buried into the ground, and the other when it's the last time someone says their name. Wow. So in essence, men can be immortal. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So wow. So life giving. So life giving. Yeah. And uh, that really shifted my grief. And you know, I don't want to go all the way to the bottom. I mean, I know it's natural, but but I feel like there's these earth angels that come your way. And in that moment, she was an earth angel for me. And as a result, I said, you know what? Uh, me and my family got together. And I said, we're gonna we're gonna build a foundation around them. You know, education was really important mm. to my grandfather. He didn't go to school, but he had nine kids, and they all got professional degrees because he resented, he, he, he really regretted not uh, finishing school. And so we created a foundation to honor both of them uh, since they passed away wow. five, five months and six days apart. So, you know, we're, we're determined to make sure that their name lasts as long as we could possibly carry that torch for them. And so keep on talking about the people that have blessed you Keep on sharing their stories. Keep sharing what you experienced of them. And in some way, we can contribute to their immortality. You just got mm-hmm. me there, Michelle, when I heard that. So uh, I know you asked me a question. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm glad you, I I, no, I'm glad you shared. Yeah, I'm glad you shared what yeah. you shared because I think um kind of ties in. Well, should I save it? Well, we can go, you can weave in your background because it, kind of what we're talking about ties into a question I, I had for you uh, since you work a lot in business and success coaches, what is success? And I think with weaving yes. in like things like loss or emotions, um, yes. you know, that things yes. do, because I think sometimes people think, oh, I'm only a business business or I'm successful. They don't factor in that certain thing that you're going to have lost, that certain things are going to happen that either yeah. 
challenge you or difficult or because there's always this idea of success is winning, 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 nothing, you know, no one factors in the uh, other stuff. Yeah, that is, wouldn't that be something? I don't know what that looks like, Michelle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <It's> so, <laughs> that's so nice. <laughs> yeah. But that's, okay. that's, that's, that's what I thought. That's what I wanted to know. Yeah, that no one fa- I don't think anybody wants to factor that in, I guess, right? <laughs> Right. You know, I'll say, like, the way that I started out, um, uh, you know, uh, earlier on, uh, my mom and, you know, my parents, they're here from Jamaica, and they came here for the American dream, you know, the white picket fence and all that. And we got here, my grand, my dad was like, he was more of an international player. And so what that means is I have a lot of sisters and brothers. And what that also means is that my mom ended up raising three girls by herself at that time in life. I'm older, her, her oldest. And um, mm-hmm. I remember... Um, you know, just seeing how hard she was working and and really praying that, you know, uh, you know, and I think what triggered it was, uh, you know, I uh, she would give me some money in a list and I would go to the store. Mm-hmm. And it happened one time, it was so memorable, it happened more than once, but it, it really lodged into my brain as far as experiences. I would be in the line and I would sometimes have more lists than money. Mm. And it was embarrassing, mm. you know. It was yeah. really embarrassing. But then, you know, you go, I went home, and I, I the first time I told her, and I was so embarrassed, and I, I had this, like, how dare you kind of thing. But then I realized how hard my mom as a single mom was working. And when mm. it happened in the future, I said, ah, oh, like, I forgot, or something like that. But while I said that, I also prayed to God, and I said, what, God? I said, please, you need to bring abundance to my family and anybody you send my way. Wow. And um, that really set me on a trajectory of, you know, I, I saw my mom and she was having ideas, she had these great ideas, and she'd implement it, but then sometimes they wouldn't go through. So I'd get excited about her ideas, but not so excited about, you know, sometimes it would not work, it would fail. Mm-hmm. And um, mm-hmm. I felt so helpless at that time. And then when I set out to join corporate America, I just wanted to, my mission was, I want to bring ideas to life. I want to bring ideas to life. <laughs> like, like, give me, a, yeah, I, I really got a lot of um, experiences and exposures and worked myself up the ladder every opportunity that I had because I wanted to stay of service, but I also wanted to get the skills to understand what does it look like or what kind of skills do I need to have to bring dreams to reality because of my experience as a child. And uh, mm. after a while, I was in corporate and, um, that was great, but it was like, you know, they would like kind of say, what have you done for me lately? Corporate has a way of like having those M- management by objectives and here's what, these are the goals yeah. here and then great, you brought in the money, now here's the next goal and you brought in the money and um, some companies have more of a humanity touch too, but some of you don't. And I was like, yeah. wow, a lot is don't. this the rest of my yeah. life? A lot <laughs> yeah. Is this the rest of my life? You know, like, is this, what have you done for me lately is what it is? And I've had, mm. I had success. I, I kind of, um, one of the one of the companies I worked for in management was Microsoft. They came and they, I'm like, I didn't even know Microsoft. I was like, I, Microsoft, I was flying in a plane. I would look up time and see Bill Gates and all that. And I was like, oh, that's nice. It was like over there. And one day I got mm. called by them. And I was like, okay, what do you call me for? <laughs> so, but they ended up recruiting mm. me to be in their management team. And, um, and that was like, it was great experience, but still that same thing, like great goals, international exposure. But like, what what is life really all about here, you know? And uh, mm-hmm. that set me on another uh, course of, well, are my skills like virtual reality or could I really do this on my own? <laughs> so I decided oh, wow. to, yeah, I, I did. I decided to start my own business. At that time, it was a boutique day spa that had a membership tied to it, you know, all the things. And I couldn't do not one of the services, but I felt like that would be a service to the community at the time. And um, and I remember being so tired. I'm like, oh, there's a lot of towels in salons and stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I would be so tired, but I'd be so satisfied. Because mm. I said, wow, this is all of my effort. This is all of my effort. And um, and I, I have something to show for it. And, you know, if I do the work, I have the results. If I don't do the work, I have the results. And that felt, I like, I, I, had, I felt good about that. And I felt good about serving the people there. I had a membership tied to it, so when the guys had the professional, you know, football, you know, you know, games, and the women would be over at my spa, and we'd be doing the, I would be, you know, pampering them with my team and my staff, and having them feel really good. And um, and in, and in those moments, it, you know, 
women were very vulnerable. You know, it didn't matter how much money they made. Everybody has life happen. Yeah. You met some women that, you know, they had cancer, so they, in order to get the massages, they have to take off their wig, and we love them, and they know that they were in a safe place. Life happens. It doesn't matter what your economic status is. It doesn't, just because you have money or you don't have money. What no one escapes is the, the life, humanity. We don't escape humanity experiences while we're here. And um, after I did that, you know, the beautiful thing is I was a millionaire by 31, but also the other thing is that, I wasn't comfortable with it. Mm. <laughs> I didn't. Okay. I associated well, that in my life is, um, you know, success is a lonely, or, and beauty is mm. pain based on experiences mm-hmm. that I've had in my life. And so even in the height of that level of success, I didn't trust it. I, I was fine with serving you, but I just didn't know, like, okay, is this going to lead me? And sure enough, it's getting in your head. I got in my head. I didn't trust it. And um, I end up filing bankruptcy after a while. Uh, and you know what, what do you attribute that to? It was probably a good lesson, I but what did you attribute? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I attribute it to not being comfortable. I attribute it to um, just like it, I was by myself. I attribute it to not having the exposure. I attribute it to not having a coach. I attribute it to not understanding how business works. I remember there was a time in my business when I was like kind of on the precipice. Things are good, got everything going. I designed the, the spa, the location, got everything up and running. And um, But it was a little rocky in the beginning because it's a new business, right? Like I've never had my business mm-hmm. before. When you're in corporate, there's a lot of departments. When you're in your own business, right. you are all the departments. It's like, what had yeah, am I wearing in this moment? That's a good way to look at it. And, um, yeah. And then when I was, one night, I was, I didn't know if I was going to meet payroll the next day. And it's interesting because life has a way of showing up for you. My mom called me that night. And the day I wasn't even in the state where my family lives. I was there uh, by myself. And she said something was wrong, and she called my grandmother. And they really mm. prayed for me that night. They prayed for me. That's the only way I made it out of that night. Because I could not imagine, literally I couldn't imagine facing people and letting them know that I couldn't pay them for work that they already did. I would rather die than do that in that moment. Mm. And um, as I made it through that night, I was walking towards the spa, and there was a man there. Remember I said my spa had membership. Well, he was there with a check to pay for his wife's membership that cover the difference of payroll and all site extra for supplies. And I think that that was the culmination of spirituality, God having the grace. Before that, I was like that A-type. Like, I do it. What's the goal? I'm going to make it happen. Go, yeah, I do, do, do. If there's a problem, get out of the way. I'll make it happen. And in this moment in my life, at that precipice, I knew that that had nothing to do with my effort. I was down as down could be, and yet still I was covered by God's love. Mm. And I made it through. And then later on proceeded to be a millionaire by 31. But that's a journey. Like, you know what? No one told me that. Like, no one told me that you you have this uh, possibly missing peril. Nobody. I was so green and new, and that, that was what being alone meant. That's why I always take a stand for my clients. It is a lot go for the goal, to follow mm-hmm. your purpose, to trust your intuition. It takes a lot of courage, a lot of faith a lot of surrender. And as an result of my life, the ups and the downs, that supported me in being able to, to, to be, take a stand for the giants in the world today because it's not easy. So after I did that, I, um, you know, got, I got hired back at Cross. Like, wait a minute now. Now that I've seen I could do something and I just kind of, uh, you know, felt a little deflated, but I had so many skills. Um, a company came looking for me and wanted to give me a job. And I was like, really? I was like, could I even be hireable at this point? I mean, I've been my own boss. Like, what does that even look like again? <laughs> so I went back into corporate. Uh, then I, companies that I worked for in the past heard about me, hired me back. And I was like, all right, this is great and everything, but this is back into that, that, that name called a rat race. <laughs> and, mm-hmm. and I was like, you know what? Uh, I'm going to do things differently. Because when I had this spot, I missed birthdays. That's another thing. Ed- energetic solitude, meaning that I wasn't evolved enough to understand that um, you can be okay by yourself. But I also realized that, you know, you don't have to be. 
And because I was so isolated and dealing mm. with the, the, the surprises of life, I know that that also attributed to the demise of that moment. But it gave me so many tools for the ride. And that's what I definitely, when you ask me, you know, what does success look like? In the moment that yeah. you fall down, collect the tools for the rise. That's not your permanent address. Know mm-hmm. that and trust that. This is a season. Just get the reason. Learn the lesson so you can move on to the next thing. And be present. Um, you know, I definitely from there... I uh, said, you know what, I am going to go back on my own, but this time I'm going to do it differently. I don't want to be tied to a location or a place. I want to be able to serve the world without any barriers to do that. I don't want any limitations on what that could look like. And, um, you know, I was doing coaching, and then I was, I, you know, and I've been coaching people informally for a long time, even in corporate. And then um, I, I stepped out and I said, you know, I said, God, I really want to do this. And I was doing maybe about, I says I had my own business. I was doing consulting. I was doing coaching. I about say sixty percent of my business was um, consulting, forty percent was coaching. And God was like, "I need you to coach the giants. I need you to coach my courageous leaders that are, you know, courageous enough to step up. And I need you to come alongside them and support them being successful." Now, you know, I was like, "Are you serious? Like, I just came. Like, I, I've been bankrupt before. Like, what are you talking about, Willis? My my consulting business was profitable, sustainable." I was doing, I was working, I was doing a lot of hours, working whatever, but I was working more than I was in corporate. I still had my own life. But I was right. like, nah, I need to go over here. I'm like, really? Seriously. And at that time, I had a coach, and I was like, man, I don't know about this. I'm getting this message. I don't know what to do with it. And she's like, well, guess what? She said, make your request. Make your request. I said, you know what? Mm, okay. We do have a guy like that, don't we? That's <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. I'm going to I said, God, my answer is yes. And my request is I want a smooth transition. Mm, and my I answer love that. is yes. So on the following Thursday, I literally went to the client and I said, look, I can no longer accept money for you from you. I'll be here for four weeks uh, to give you my notice. You know, after four weeks, I'm no longer accepting any money from you. If you need to call me and you ask me something, I'll be here for you. But I'm called to do something different. And that's Thursday that I had that conversation with her, I went to a a conference, um, and uh, I actually was, that's where I met a lady by the name of Lisa Nichols, and Mm. Lisa Nichols, uh, it's like, wow, she's pretty amazing, like, wow, this lady, I was like, because in my business, I was with colleagues that really were all about profits, I'm like a unicorn when I was in that group, I was like, I love people, like, I would do things when it came to my level of service. Yes, I was proper, I was successful, but they felt like I was kind of too soft, and I was like too, you know what I mean? Right. So I got a lot of slack on that. But then I met yeah. Lisa Nichols, and I was like, wow, I was able to see how she served people on every level, whether you sign up for her extensive uh, offers or she, you get her book, you know? She, or, or she also did things for free, which I did things for free, but she did it in a way that was sustainable, systematic in a way, you know what I mean? That was, it was like her heart was expressing to the world. So I signed up to be part of her global leadership program, and before I even got out there, they ended up saying, we need you to be our coach. We need, we need you to take us on. <laughs> I had a, her, Stacey Carter, her CEO at the time, she, she coached me one day, and she's like, uh, uh, we need you. <laughs> you know, because I love systems, and they're like, you know, we're looking to go public. We would love for you to support us in making that happen. And um, I was like, all right, I'll take you on as a client. And um, and even and the, and right before that happened, the weekend before that happened, I had already made one hundred and thirty-two thousand dollars in a weekend in three days. So mm. making that request, those bold requests, that's like it's, it's it's not manifestation. It's not just that. It's stepping into it, getting into action. When I made the request, I I did my side of the bargain. I said yes, I'm going to answer the call. And this is my request. But I didn't wait to see evidence of that before I did what I said I would do. And in less than like a month, six figures in the bank, Lisa Nichols is like, we want you to, uh, we would love to, you to take us on as a client. And that's when my journey started, doing what I knew I was born to do, was serve giants. I've had a lot of giants since then and around that time. But I knew that that was my life purpose, and I will support people in monetizing their sole purpose. 
As a result, um, I a founder of a movement called Live Rich, Spread Wealth, which is all about owning mm-hmm. all of who you are, the good, the bad, the quirky, your education, your experiences, mm-hmm. and committing to society in a positive way, humanity in a positive way, and making and getting out of your own way to receive the abundance that that provides. That is what Live Rich, Spread Wealth, in essence, means. And um, I do this, I've been doing this for about 15 years now. Um, and uh, what I have to say is, is that it is when you take a stand to make a difference in the lives of others um, and you do it to the best of your ability, you actually can be very profitable. But it's like energetic money, like we say, is energy, right? It's energetically yeah. what I'm putting out, I'm open to receive what comes back. I'm not focused on that. I am focused on letting the giants so well know that I can support you and I can serve you. I'm focused on being that light, shining my light as much as possible. I'm not responsible for what they choose to do. I am responsible right. to let them know that I'm there to serve them. Yeah, I love that. And that's what I've been doing for the last 15 years. <laughs> I love you saying that about requests. Uh, yeah. I, by the way, I've met Lisa Nichols because I used to uh, I developed a meditation curriculum at Agape and she was spiritual center. Yeah. And uh yeah, I met her there. Um but I think it's so important what you say about the requests. Um I use that a lot yeah. myself with my uh especially couples uh, clients I work with like requirements oh, yeah. and requests that we don't ask enough. We don't put the request and write a request as alignment. It puts us more in alignment with our truth. And it also has to You're do with so worth, right? Yeah. right? Right, Melissa? The, the yeah, or that we, Yeah, of not, yeah, to not ask for something, right? Not to ask for... Yes. Yeah, or not feeling your choice. Condition. Not asking for something. You know, children are to be heard, not, not like, what they say? Children are to be... Uh, uh, seen but not, not heard. heard. Yeah, seen but oh, not yeah. heard, yes. So you're yep. growing up with that. You're growing up with, you know, are you even worthy, depending on your, your circumstances, um, you know, as children are though the most precious beings uh, from from being birthed into this world, the biggest gift, there's a lot of things that happen that can really impact them at such an early age. And we never know what we're going through, right? And so these are the things that we grow up into adulting that are maybe not healed and not acknowledged or even discovered. Um, and so these are the things that we might not even know how to make a request or even worthy of a request. Yep. Does yeah. that make sense? In the, or good point, not right. even know how to, not even know how right. to, that you what can. What is the room to that muscle? Right. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you know what? Well, and that obviously, Michelle, you were able to do that because you, I, I always tell people, it's not because I read it in a book. <laughs> so so no. you knew about both requests because clearly life has shown you that this actually works. You you, you know, like there was something that was yeah. like, okay, let But me there's always, but I even look, there's, all, there's, always, there's always room for improvement, though, you know, yes. to request yes, more. Absolutely. I mean, that's absolutely. another thing. Once you get used, then you realize, wow, I can even ask for more. I can even request oh, more. Yeah, I can it have is. more, requ- yeah, requirements. Um, that's kind of that totally. refinement. You send your muscle. Yeah. Yep, you yeah. your muscle. That's that request, bold request and abundance. It's a muscle that's getting strengthened at the time as you grow into that. What would you suggest to our listeners to start with that? Because that is that is a um, a biggie, I see, whether it's it, – what talks to me a lot of times is actually in interpersonal relationships a lot, you know, um, spousal or partnership, significant other – and then it can, a lot of times you see also in the corporate setting um, where people have, yeah. you know, requests. Or it's even even what they signed up for, a certain um, job description or task, and then maybe they're not able to meet those uh, requirements or they're trying to, and maybe, you know, sometimes the supervisor or the boss doesn't, give them full reign like you know they were hired to do um that i've seen that happen um before what would you suggest to people what's a tiny way to like a step a step to just sure kind of what start i would say that yeah absolutely to start is to know that it's possible 
So what it looks mm-hmm. like is um, this is really rooted from a scarcity mindset versus an abundant mindset. And mm. when you think that there's not enough, then, you know, especially those givers, <laughs> if there's not enough, we take a hit for, for humanity, right? Oh, well, you have that mm-hmm. food or – or there's not enough, so I can't ask for that job. Sufi already has it, you know. Or, or like, mm-hmm, or, you know, mm-hmm. like we, or, or I can't ask him to support me in that way because what if he says no, or it disrupts the relationship, you know? Mm-hmm. And so, but what happens is that's something that is like you will never know unless you make the request. The worst thing they can mm-hmm. do is say no. But what if they mm-hmm. say yes? Yeah. What if you were to say, honey? Um, and I'll give you like I love to give personal examples because I feel like I can I can connect but it's, it's easy to you know say a theory right but I'll tell right. you um, being remarried right and I've always been that go getter pretty independent I've already you know had some wealth and things of that nature so when I finally had a little girl I, I had my child at 43 years old um, perfect timing for me <laughs> I'm not gonna have any and um, but you know what? I was operating as if I wasn't married. I was operating mm. as if it was on my shoulders to, you know, support our child. And because I I did not know how to be open to making requests. I was operating as if I always operated, even though my mm. circumstances were totally different. Mm-hmm. And I had to realize that, wait a minute, no. No, I cannot follow what I've always done. And I said, honey, you know, can you help me with, you know, can you take her on some nights? You know, it's like, wait, you know, the babies are babies. They're going to cry. I was going up there getting up every night as if I didn't have a partner. <laughs> and, but we do and that. We're conditioned in, right? The we circumstances change, but but the pattern, if no. we don't change it, the, the pattern, pattern stays is still the same. There. Yeah, right. still there. And then I, I did it, and I was like, wow. He's like, oh, you're yeah, no problem. You know, like, I mean, anything that I asked, it wasn't like it wasn't available. I never made a request. Yeah. And I assumed that it wasn't available, even as opposed to just asking. Ask. Stay curious in life. If you want to get that promotion, then I say, you know, because I have the corporate mirror life too, I say, well, what does it need to look like? I go to them and I say, what does it need to look like for me to be positioned for that particular role? I go to HR, I go to the manager, what have you. You know, and so therefore I did not have to fill in the gap. Because I don't know what I don't know. Mm. But I learned that you can't assume. Like, so they say, and that's what I found out. I asked, what does it need to look like for this to happen? Or what does it need to look like for us to be in partnership? Because every time I pose that, as smart as I am, I stay curious. Because if I know everything, mm-hmm. there's no room to pour into the possibility of what can be right. co-created with either God or partners or, or career opportunities or clients. So there's a few nuggets there, I hope. I mean, you said start small. So I would say mm-hmm. first you got to believe it's even available, and if not, just just go for it anyway. The worst thing they can say is no. That's the worst. That's not going to hurt you. That's not going to kill you. So instead of assuming that it's not available, make a, make a request. And the other is uh, oftentimes the question that you can ask yourself is, based on where you want to go, what does it need to look like in order for me to be promoted with grace and ease? With increased abundance and not to sacrifice my family, my, whatever your fears are, but what does it need to look like to be able to get everything that you want? Not just the money, it's the lifestyle. It's how you want to feel when you get yeah. what you want. So put that in yeah. there as well, because sometimes we leave that out. <laughs> I yeah, and that's life, really... I didn't have a family and I didn't have a life. I made a lot of sacrifices because I assumed that that's what it took, but it didn't. Yeah. I just assumed. Yeah, good point. Now we've got in the chat Athena saying, "I just realized that I need to ask for what I need to be in alignment in my life." So simple, but never knew how to make this request. Yeah, I think that's it. That it's the how to, where to start. What what's the start yeah. of making these requests? Just ask what you does know? it need to look like. What does it need mm-hmm. to look? Because we ask, we ask, you have to ask a different question to get a different result, right? And so we might say, why is this happening to me? Or why did he do that? Or why did he do this? And, you know, we focus on what's not happening. But when you're looking to be creating what you really want in your life and you've never been there before, then you can be in a quiet space and you could dream it. Like, what do you want? 
what does it mean to look like for us to have a a relationship that's based on love, loyalty, harmony, and honoring each other? What does that need to look like? Mm-hmm. And stuff starts. Ha- then you then you will get answers intuitively. You can get it. Got to be open and don't judge what you get. Just that, take that step in that direction. What does it need to look like for me to uh, create more abundance for myself and my family, and not sacrifice mm-hmm. my, my spending quality time with them? Because guess what? That might be something you never even imagined. And because you asked the question, I believe that God. I say God. I call God boss of all bosses, but I definitely acknowledge universe, whatever, whatever it is for you. Whatever term, um, yeah. It allows those those things that you never knew to come in for you because now you're asking the question and you're being curious. So the things that yeah. you might not have thought about, the things that you might not have looked at it like that, things can come and God can come and actually support you in that particular answer or the universe or, or your angels can come and say, oh, she's ready. She's ready now. She's ready. It's so excited because they're always waiting for you. <laughs> but you got to be ready. <laughs> Yeah, you got to be you got to be ready. And I do like when you're saying um what does it look like because then we get out of the head. We get into the emotions, yeah. the feeling, the heart. Yeah. It starts, yeah. you know, alchemizing those energies and gets it kind of going. Yeah. It it adds juice to the thought. So I really love that. I feel like that's a really important step for people because how it looks for me may look different for differently from someone absolutely. else absolutely right absolutely you have yes absolutely because they like, talk about balance and all this, but balance is different for different people <laughs> yeah yes, exactly so, yes so, and we have to so honor what, that yes yes yeah yes because we're different for a reason we're we're very similar and we're different for a reason we each have our own divine fingerprint you know our own divine path that can coexist, but we are bringing different things to the table. And there's a lot of there's a lot of beautiful and freedom. There's a lot of freedom in that. And that's why those things that were quirky, those things that people were like, "Why did you do that?" You might have been made a fun of it in earlier years. That might be your superpower later mm-hmm. on, right? That might that might have always been your superpower, but people didn't understand it, and it's not for them to understand. Just know that whatever is unique about you, stand in that. And trust your co-creator, right? The manufacturer, whoever you believe brought us here, <laughs> trust that mm-hmm. they kind of know what is going to support you wherever you're looking to go. And trust that abundance is your birthright. And not just money. That's like the least of the things. Abundance in all areas of your life. Trust mm-hmm. that. So ask questions based on that belief system. And I promise you some pretty awesome, freaky, uh, out-of-your-comfort-zone things can happen that will serve your highest good. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Now, Melissa, how can people connect with you further? And I think you have some things coming up that you may want to share with the listeners that might be empowering for them. Oh, absolutely. So thank you. And I want to say thank you, Michelle, because I'm so honored to be here with you. And I thank you for all that you're doing for your listeners and for the world and having such an amazing safe place to for people to come and listen and to and so for you to pour into. So I want to thank you for that opportunity. And I was able to, you know, look things up a little bit, learn more about you. And I said, okay, well, look, I actually want to share with your listeners that uh, I have a give. Um, I have a documentary that's coming out about mm-hmm. the movement. Um, it is something that is available to anyone that wants to be inspired, knows what it looks like to go sit down and, and, be ba- and, and come back up. Any giant or anyone that, has a dream, wants to know how to navigate that, I provide you my blueprint. <laughs> so okay. it's a documentary for the very first time. And where you can go is to liverichspreadwealth.com. There you can go and get a complimentary ticket for the premiere. It's going to be premiering soon. Sign up there, and you can uh, check it out as far as uh, it will show you the trailer, give you an idea of what it's all about, all about the cast members and people that are in there. And so um, – I want to just uh, spread the news that, you know what, you are more than enough. You really do matter. We need you so much. And that, you know, mm-hmm. um, follow your dreams. Follow your purpose. There's, there's a way that things do, they do work out. And even in you said, well, what makes me successful? Successful is uh, I have the receipts to show by any stretch of the imagination in the world that I'm successful. 
But I tell you that success is an inside-out job. Success mm-hmm. is a mindset. It's a, it's, a, it's a state of being. It's a state of mm-hmm. being. It's knowing mm-hmm. that it's possible like it. and it's possible for you. And, um, you know, I just want to leave you with that. And for all, any of you that want to learn more about me, it's MelissaHughes.com. I'm, I am Melissa Hughes on the social media handles, whether it be, you know, um, Instagram or uh, anywhere, really. Um, but, yeah, I would say I want to welcome you to check out the premiere, um, check out the movie, the documentary on the movement. And it was created to share, to share my life. I'm totally outside my comfort zone with doing this. But I said, you know what, it's not about me. I learned that a long time ago. And if this can support someone, if this can inspire someone and give you something to take away that will serve you and your legacy, then my answer is yes. Oh, beautiful. And we just had somebody sign up. Very good and supportive. Oh, wonderful. Oh, good, Athena. And Queen, thank you. I received the gift. Thank you. Oh, beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Wow. Well, thank you for being here, Melissa, and just sharing not only your wisdom and insights, but your amazing energy. It's just so okay, um, yeah. buoyant and supportive and inspiring. Well, thanks so much. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Come back anytime. Take care. Awesome. Take care. Mm-hmm. Bye bye. Oh, beautiful, and you receive the gift. I love that, receive the gift. You know, there's a time of receiving more. Anytime we are going to have more action in the world, inspired action, we need to first receive the insight, the inspiration, and sometimes that comes from other people. All right, oh, Radiant Soul Lights, good to see everyone in the chat. Lots of love and light to all of you, and all of you that called in, all of you that are listening later. Um, if you want to do a deeper dive with me, you can go to Patreon, uh, connect with me there. Also, love it if you would um, subscribe to the YouTube channel, follow me on Instagram, and um, just, wow, have a beautiful week, and always, always, always shine your light bright, share your insights, your understanding, and, of course, just keep awake. Awakenings broadcast every Wednesday, 12 p.m. Pacific Time. Archive shows available on iTunes. For continued awakened conversations and insights, join the Awakenings group on Facebook. And check out Michelle's blog at soulplayground.com. And keep awake. Are you awake?